We literally didn't even plan that. What is that? There he is. There's the DP for the day. You ready to work with a PA for the first time? Yeah. A new PA? Hello my friend, thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new to the channel or if you are in the notification squad, if I even have one, I just want to say thank you so much for all the support that I've been shown here on YouTube. It's meant a lot to me. I've loved getting to know a couple of you, um, or a few of you, really. And yeah, this video series is a really fun one because it's with my friend Blaze Pivovar, who is incredibly talented. Go follow him below. He produced a music video that is, quite frankly, mind-blowing for the gear that he was using, and I'm excited for you to learn more about that. So, we have made the production, the pre-production, this is the production video, there is a post-production video coming, and then there will be a Q&A. So, get in all of those questions, and yeah, we've got a lot to learn from Blaze. So, I'll let you dive straight into this video, but I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, doing all those things because it's been a lot of fun to help more people make better videos. So with that, just thank you and go enjoy the video. So we're just going to dive right in. What we're going to be doing in this production episode is just watching through it. Uh, but before we get to that, we're going to talk through gear and moving from pre-production into the actual production because some of those things blur a little bit as to which part they fall into. So we're just gonna get started right away with the kind of those bleeding pieces like between pre-production into the production day. We have written down here, testing the camera rig, balancing the glide cam, printing the shot lists, packing the gear into the car, finalizing the last production pieces like the stationary bike, the old TV, and then you built out your camera rig. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just start, talk me through mm -hmm. going from the pre-production pieces to the production. Yeah. Yeah. So after we finished up, uh, I guess pre-production in the last video, yeah. there were some things we forgot. Um, the day before the shoot, I actually spent some time in my house kind of testing um, some of the gear. So the main things I was looking to do was to save time on set. And so with that, we knew that we were gonna be shooting a few shots on a glide cam, which maybe are easy, easier to balance than a gimbal, but still take some time. Yeah. And so I went with a just kind of lighter weight camera setup and at my house the day before I got the glide cam completely um, balanced on a quick release plate. So I knew that I could just pop it on when we had to shoot those um, that day. And then there was one shot in particular on the bridge that you guys probably noticed with um, Elijah on the bike. Yep. The initial bridge shot, we were shooting that with a dolly and we I knew it was gonna be kind of a longer take and the timing was important. So yep. I actually spent the day before as well kind of testing the autofocus and the timing of how fast or quick I needed to move the dolly right. to to run, not run out of track. So I think yeah. I had either like a six or eight foot um, dolly track. And so yeah. I needed to kind of time, um, that shot. time that shot so we didn't have to spend time the day of really trying to get, get that right. Right, yep. So those are a few of the final details back on the pre-production video mm -hmm. that start to bleed into the production day. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's kind of our transition to production, which is gear. And this is the one everybody is curious about, everybody always wants to know. And of course, when you see a great video, it's usually because of the gear that they used. We all, we all know that. So we might as well talk about gear, of course. <laughs> um, but Blaze had a main camera package and then kind of a secondary camera package uh, that we already touched on a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then we actually wrote down pretty much every piece of gear that was on set that day. So go ahead and walk us through mm -hmm. each of those and I might pause mm -hmm. you for questions. Yeah. So starting at 
the main package, we were shooting on the Fuji X-T3. Um, I think John's going to yep. be showing some footage of that, but um, basically it's the X-T3 with a little bit of a rig of sorts. Um, main reason being uh, battery life. I was using an external monitor as well as we knew we were going to be shooting all day. And I think for me, having being able to power both my camera and monitor with external larger yep. batteries is just super convenient that I don't really have to to think about it yep. and I knew some of the shots too were going to be handheld and so having a little bit of like a heavier camera um, was helpful because the X-T3 doesn't have IBIS yep. and so I just knew that that was going to be helpful um, right. as well as the external monitor we really used um, I felt like it was helpful when working with the band to be able to show them what we just shot on a yeah. bigger screen um, rather than everyone huddling around the really small tiny um, yeah. XT3 screen that doesn't swivel it kind of just yeah. tilts tilts yeah. up and down yeah and so that was the the main package and we we really shot on two lenses so I have just Canon mount um, Sigma art um, lenses so the 18 to 35 yeah. 1 8 and then the 24 to 70 2 8 with optical stabilization yep. in the lens so we pretty much shot the whole video just those two on those two um, we had one other kind of fun vintage lens that we used for one specific shot but we'll, uh, we'll touch on that while we're playing the video we'll talk we'll talk on that later so that was, that was pretty much the main package and then we had the second camera package which is what we talked about um, a little bit ago, but that's just the X, it was another XT3 on a quick release plate um, and the 18 to 35 that we just had set aside for the glide cam shots. Yep. We had already balanced it. No microphone, no external monitor, no external battery, just body, lens. Mm -hmm. But the lens wasn't even living on it. Right. Just had an adapter so that you could throw the lens on it. Right. Yeah. Right. So that was it. That was the second camera package. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and we could have done it all on the same one. Yeah. We just, I just have two X-T3s and it was easier to not have to take my rig apart or balance a really heavy rig on the glide cam. Yeah. It just was easier to. And what we were talking about in the first video and for everybody else who's watching this that is like Blaze and I that doesn't have big budgets, um, lots of bands don't, mm -hmm. lots of artists don't, and we don't. Mm -hmm. And so... Saving time is saving money, mm -hmm. seriously, when it comes to renting spaces mm -hmm. um, or even just trying to use your time on projects um, that you really value. If you can save time, mm -hmm. that helps a ton. Mm -hmm. So you saved a bunch of time by mm -hmm. pre-balancing a dedicated gimbal camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was a big part of your thought there. But mm -hmm. now let's go through quickly all of these other pieces of gear. Some of these were really important. Yeah. Others were, actually, I would say every piece of gear we had was really mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. um, but a few of them are pieces of like premium gear yeah. that we mentioned at the end of, towards the end of the last mm -hmm. video mm -hmm. uh, that you were able to rent mm -hmm. from a mm -hmm. uh, friend that, yeah. that had access to some of this right. nicer stuff. Right. Do you want to do those ones first? Yeah. We'll, premium ones? we'll just go through, yeah, kind of okay. those premium pieces that... Mm -hmm. that were some of the more important ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for the dolly, we had a Dana dolly, and we kind of used the Dana dolly both on the track kind of stands, but we also utilized like a tripod kind of makeshift rig yeah. with the Dana dolly as well. Yeah. Um, and then in addition, we had rented a Gemini 2x1 um, light, which is basically like a light panel that can do like by color, yeah. Um, I mean, RGB effects. We really just use it Enormous as like- Enormous light source. Yeah, it's huge. We just use it as like a daylight, Yep. large source, yep. threw it in some different shots. Yep. Um, didn't Again, have... when we go to the video and are mm -hmm. playing through the video, we can point out where yeah, different where pieces of gear were coming into the, mm -hmm. to the video. Yeah, and then we had my Godox SL60W yeah. with a, Softbox, super yeah, tiny little simple, light. like the bare bones of like a yeah. daylight balanced, like yeah, got, six, sixty watt got light. the job done, and you know a simple five in one reflector. Um, I brought some shears and some duck clamps, just kind of like light modifiers that are helpful. 
um, yeah. just kind of to be versatile. Yeah. Uh, the other thing we rented from our friend was this like really heavy duty fancy tripod. So I think yeah. the tripod legs were a company called Vinton, mm-hmm. and we also had like an o, an older O'Connor fluid head. Yep. Yeah. And so that was really important for the shots we did on the dolly with our kind of makeshift rig as well as the chorus yeah where we were getting the fluid shot in the middle as well as the the whip pans yeah Yeah, so for the tripod yeah you did the really important parts of that were the Mm -hmm. the center rotating shot having a Mm -hmm. perfectly smooth Mm -hmm. heavy duty tripod Mm -hmm. and then having um for your whips yeah because Lots of the transitions, as you're about to find out, mm-hmm. were done in camera, mm-hmm. on set. Yeah. So having the really nice tripod was yeah. important for that. Having it weighted yeah. heavy. And it let us, the head let us basically adjust like the tension of how fast we could whip it. So I think for the whip pans, we had it as loose as you could go. But for the um, chorus shots, we actually had it pretty tight. And we were I was pushing on the camera pretty hard. Um, yeah. just to make sure it was really smooth. So right. not my tripod that I own wouldn't have been able to do that. It would have no. been probably more, um, you more user air and me yeah. just trying to, to not nearly it. as smooth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's most of the gear. Then there was a C stand, which mm-hmm. you rented, I guess, yeah. um, shears, duck clamp, mm-hmm. a cheap hazer. Yeah. It was water based mm-hmm. so that we weren't leaving any. Mm-hmm. oil or anything like so that at the rental place smoke alarms and a lot of rental places might get particular about smoke they might get particular about oil yeah. based haze things like that but for the most part nobody's gonna fight with water based hazers because mm-hmm. it's literally just water yeah. so yeah and um, we, we used like probably less than a fourth of a tank I mean yeah. we didn't use it and it was tiny time. tiny so like tiny. real small little guy um, and we'll talk about that later too, but then the aperture MC little, mm-hmm. little light, mm-hmm. and then, uh, the iPhone flashlight mm-hmm. <laughs> and there was a light bulb, a daylight mm-hmm. balanced mm-hmm. light bulb that we brought that we brought. Mm-hmm. So that is all of the gear mm-hmm. that is seriously like yeah. every piece of gear that we could think of yeah. after watching the video time and again, yeah. that, that was used. Mm-hmm. So Again, we talked about this in the last video, but in terms of gear, yeah. really accessible. Um, mm-hmm. We will answer in the Q&A, which will be the final portion of this series, mm-hmm. we will answer uh, some of the questions about, you know, why not a gimbal? Mm-hmm. Could you use a gimbal? Why not the X-T4 instead of the X-T3? Mm-hmm. Why not rent a more expensive camera package? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of questions like that mm-hmm. that are worth answering. Yeah. Um, and we will get to those in the Q&A in the last episode of this mm-hmm. series. Uh, but for now, transitioning away from gear, uh, we're almost to the point where we're going to play the video here and watch yeah. through it real quick. Um, but when we showed up, when we did the venue tour, mm-hmm. it was bright, and, bright sunny, and sunny, very sunny. And then when we showed up on set the day of, and, and we knew the day before, yeah. it was a downpour it was raining a lot overcast yeah rain clouds fortunately it was raining all day Mm -hmm. it was not partly cloudy so that was actually good news was that it was consistent all day it was really cloudy and overcast Mm -hmm. um but that that was something that did kind of affect our Mm -hmm. our scheduling yeah yeah so with that we had basically planned two different halves of the shoot. So there was gonna be a whole half that was gonna be in the living room space that we kind of open up in the video with. And then we had all the shots that were in the courtyard. And so basically knowing where the sun was gonna be the day that we went and toured it, we knew that the worst, we were gonna leave ourselves in a really bad place if we waited for um, the afternoon to shoot the courtyard sequences because yeah. the sun was just going to be like unmanageable. I mean, yeah. super bright, direct, just through that back window. And if it was a sunny day, it would have been uncontrollable back in the light. courtyard. Yeah, yeah, in the courtyard. Yeah. So we we had planned to shoot all the courtyard shots when we showed yeah. up. So hey, we'll sh- we'll show up while the sun is still outside that window. We're going to shoot everything in the courtyard, and then we will shoot everything in the living room. 
that's and when the sun is out. By the way, you're going to see this in the video when we go to it, but mm -hmm. we actually, because it didn't work out that way, mm -hmm. we ended up having to use the Gemini as our sun. Yeah, as the sun. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's, that's going to come in later, uh -huh. but... Yeah, the whole day got shifted, mm -hmm. and that's you know that's gonna be right. kind of a recurring theme for indie mm -hmm. music videos mm -hmm. and low budget music videos. Mm -hmm. Is you just you have to be prepared with yeah. everything beforehand, mm -hmm. and have a few mm -hmm. alternatives in place, yeah, so that it doesn't throw you off or completely ruin the shoot. Right when you get a wrench thrown in your plans. Yeah, we knew that in the courtyard because it was going to be cloudy all day, we knew that we actually wanted to wait for the sun to get higher in the sky so that we could get more light into the courtyard when we were shooting. So yep. we decided to kind of flip flop the schedule and just do the whole living room scenes to, to start the day. Yep. So that's, and then, and then arriving on set, I guess mm -hmm. we should touch on that first. Yeah. Uh, arriving on set, the, you mm -hmm. broke it down for the band, kind of explained it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah, kind of had was. like a, just before we get rolling, kind of like a meeting. So we um, just kind of got everyone on the same page with what the schedule was going to be for the day. I think looking back, um, this could have been something I did beforehand, but um, it still is always a good just kind of touch point, get everyone together. And before you start shooting, just thank everyone for being there. Yep. Thank them for um, just their willingness to, to hop in and, then kind of just walk them through, you know, what are we, what are we shooting today? What are like, what do I need them to keep in mind as we're shooting? I think it was only like a five minute meeting, but it was yeah. helpful just to get um, all, once we got all the gear in, just to have a point to like connect. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, the next thing on here is quickly my role as the PA. So uh, when Blaze started having this, this idea and was approached by the band, that was November, right? Yeah. And we ended yeah. up shooting end of January. Yeah. So I kind of got to come along a little bit for the pre-production ride. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I wasn't super involved, but I kind of got to hear ideas and yeah. got to help in, in little ways. Um, and so then Blaze came to me and, and was like, hey, so here's what we have left. Mm -hmm. Could I have your help on the day of? Right. And, uh, I said I didn't want any money and I was just gonna, I would be right. happy to be there. So my role as the PA was was anything I could contribute. Yeah. Like I wanted to be in the right place at the right time, moving furniture, moving lights, mm -hmm. uh, you know, helping out the band, going and getting food. Mm -hmm. Controlling um, the iPhone yeah. um, playlist, the yeah. song. And yep triggering the music, mm -hmm. um, barking the shot list, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. making sure that Blaze got all the shots that he wanted. Mm -hmm. Your role as a, as a PA or, mm -hmm. or, you know, second camera, whatever you are, any, anywhere underneath or behind mm -hmm. the DP, mm -hmm. your role is just to help the vision get executed. Yeah. And, and that was ultimately what I wanted to do was I wanted to be mm -hmm anything that I needed to be mm -hmm. to see the right. vision of this video come to fruition. Yeah, and I think John John did a really good job that day, like filling that role. I think part of why I asked him was I knew that John wasn't, his job that day was beyond just being like a set of hands and taking orders. I think I, I knew that John was gonna come in, be looking to serve, had a good attitude, and also like creatively contribute to the video and so i think john filled that role really well because he wasn't just well like treating me as a dp hey man it's your video your call um yeah. kind of tell me what to do john did a really good job of if i had questions or i wasn't sure about something getting his like i really trust him and his eye and his work so hiring someone who could actually speak into some of the shots we were shooting how we were shooting them uh, I yeah. felt like was way more helpful than just having a, Hands. an intern assistant or I, I don't know. Like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, thanks. But true. also, yeah, you're not you're not always gonna have a DP so humble uh, that will take advice. Um, so sometimes you'll just be running coffee errands and getting yeah. food and, and being extra set of hands. But yeah. but yeah, in some cases, yeah, if you mm -hmm. are a PA for someone as humble as Blaze, then you will end up contributing creatively and and you might see something that they miss. I mean, mm -hmm. when you're the DP, I, I feel like this comes out of the wedding world a lot, is mm -hmm. that like when you're in the wedding world, 
and you're the second shooter, you have to remember that, that your first shooter is like so focused on the things that they have to do mm -hmm. that there is a lot they're missing. Mm -hmm. And so as the PA, as second shooter, you know, extra set of hands, mm -hmm. whatever, yeah. it's your job to like help them see things that they might be missing. Um, mm -hmm. And so we'll get into one of those right at the start. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in this first shot, but I think yeah. that actually is a great transition to us starting to play the video and mm -hmm. actually just talking through um, the video because right at the outset, mm -hmm. we had some hiccups yeah. and I noticed something while you were a little bit frazzled with, mm -hmm. with uh, getting your shot, your first shot set and everything rolling. So yeah. uh, let's go ahead and dive in to the video. We'll just click play and then pause it when we're ready to talk through it. Yep. Okay, first shot, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Important one. Yeah, this right here is the transition with me being the PA because we set up this first shot and we're probably gonna spend a little bit of time here on this first shot because yeah. the first shot of your video and of the day, they're not always the same, first of all. Yeah. In this case, they were. Uh -huh. But those are your most important shots, really, because they kind of set the tone. Mm -hmm. So the first shot sets the tone for your video, but the first shot of your day, shoot day, kind of sets the tone for like how you're feeling, like how everybody's feeling on set. So we took a while to get this whole thing set up. You know, we had moved everything in, mm -hmm. we got this shot set, and then mm -hmm. the mistake. Right. Hit that. Yeah. So biggest thing with the first shot, we had everything set up. We've got the shears set up. We've got the Gemini two by one giving us some backlight. Uh, yeah. Which that's what, that's what's going on back here mm -hmm. um, in, in the background mm -hmm. is that you've got the Gemini blasting light mm -hmm. through here pretending to be our sun. Yeah, we're trying to hide the rest of the courtyard. Yeah, um, you can see a little bit of, of info yeah. out here where the light kind of falls off. Yeah. Um, but it ends up just looking like plants yeah. out there, which yeah. which is fine. Right, and so we had we had everything set up. We have the, the we rearranged the living room a little bit, moved a little bit of furniture. We've got the camera on the dolly, and I think I click record on the first shot, and I basically, what I'm seeing on my external monitor, the moment I hit record, it changes and it almost looked like, you know, my picture profile. The contrast increased double. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looked super bad. It was terrible. I mean, super crunchy. So while I'd be previewing the shot on my monitor and it looks fine, I hit record, image looks terrible. So I think I start, I don't really know what's going on. Um, this is not what you want to happen the first shot of the day. The band is... You know, we've been setting this shot up for 20 minutes and yeah, I'm kind of, so I think I pull John in and I say, Hey, you know, the, you know, the XT3. Well, I've never seen this. What's, what's the deal. And so I think together we just kind of found our way to the screen settings. Yeah. We had a setting, you know what the setting was? It was natural live view mode. It was on. Yeah. Do not turn on natural live view mode. Yeah. It gives you a different image while previewing mm -hmm. than when recording. Yeah. So that was yeah. the problem. And we, the reason why that was turned on the night before, I was messing with my camera settings, trying to figure out how to route better audio to my external monitor so that the band could preview shots. Yeah. I've never messed with that setting before. And I think I tried that setting, oh, maybe this would help. Because the X-T3 wasn't sending any yeah. audio to the monitor, so if you, viewed a shot on your monitor no sound no sound if you viewed it on the xt3 screen you got sound, sound tiny i think screen. it's a monitor thing i think it's yeah. just my monitor you could yeah. plug in headphones to the headphone jack but yeah so anyway that's that's what's going on here in the first shot yeah. um and while blaze was worried about this this is where uh being a pa if you have a humble director and you're able to contribute creatively yeah um i looked at what we were shooting and i said like you know, we did not have haze in this shot. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like it was going to make a huge difference. Yeah. And 
haze is something that you just can't really fake. Like yeah. You can't add that in post. Yeah. Um, you can do some things yeah. that contribute to that look, mm -hmm. but you just really can't get an organic, true haze in post. Mm -hmm. And so I was just looking at this scene and I was yeah. like, I know, I'm so sorry, I'm annoying, it's gonna take yeah. five minutes. I like, think we shot the whole, we shot all the takes we needed and I was getting ready to move on and John said, I really think we should do it. Yeah, and I was like, oh shoot, I totally forgot that. Yeah. So, so I had actually, I had the hate. <laughs> Forgive the sirens, yeah. but yeah, the hazer I had warming up mm -hmm. while we got every take that we mm -hmm. needed. Mm -hmm. And then after we got every take that mm -hmm. we needed, I was like, hey, so the hazer is ready. I think we should do yeah, it. Yeah, we just forgot it. So we actually did it really yeah. fast. Mm -hmm. We hazed the room wafted it around yeah. like you know we just flailed yeah. our arms to like kind of spread yeah. the haze and fortunately it filled the room pretty evenly yeah and we just rolled this shot yeah so it just helped the shot um i think the wall kind of the the trim around the windows here this was just way darker without yeah. haze and it just kind of made it the image it up a feel bit. softer yeah. and um, I think the back of his head, the back of the heads look pretty crunchy right here. That's what kind of all the walls looked like. Yeah. And so that was a big, um, yeah. really harsh contrast. Yeah. Yeah. So it softened the whole room up. Yeah. Otherwise, what we've got going on here is we've got the uh, Godox SL60 right here, yeah. blasting light this way. Uh, we had the practical lamp. Mm -hmm. turned on mm -hmm. which we'll talk about later mm -hmm. when we face the other direction mm -hmm. and we went here we did no no softbox on this shot nope. so because this was backlight we decided um this was just hard light kind of blasting into their faces but we knew because we're shooting from behind that um we didn't really we didn't want that yeah and we were okay with this harsh contrast like yeah. that was gonna be fine yeah so yeah that's what's going on here in this shot mm -hmm. uh in a minute, we'll be facing the other direction, and mm -hmm. you'll notice there is a wall here. There's yeah. a wall behind the TV. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of excited for that reveal. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm gonna mute this so we can just talk through yeah. the introductions. So the introductions were just kind of a fun, quick, easy mm -hmm. shot. I'll put in some BTS of this, but- All handheld. Yeah, completely handheld, handheld zooms. You did use autofocus yeah. on that zoom. Yeah, yeah. autofocus um, plus zoom, yeah. Yeah, which I just, I love that it's autofocus because like it actually looks like an organic, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. hand catching up with mm -hmm. the zoom. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll get into post, on the post production video, which is coming next, we'll get into the title work. Right. Um, but here we go. We have the shot facing the other direction now. Yeah. Um, so the big, yeah, the big reveal. Yeah, the big reveal. So yeah, the funny thing about this shot, the camera is now exactly where the wall was. So this, the TV, we didn't move the TV closer. Um, TV stayed the same. We in our pre-production just tour of the space, we actually learned that that wall was designed to disappear into the floor. Yeah, that that wall lowers Sinks. into the ground. So you flick a light switch and a corded drill yep. cranks this wall into the floor. Yeah. Um, a home built in the 60s, crazy. engineered wonderfully, yeah. moves this wall into the ground. So we were able to keep yeah. all of our framing the exact same, put the dolly tracks on over. the opposite side, yeah. over top of the television set, yeah, and just push in. Push in. So that's so, as simple as this shot is. Yeah. There was nothing crazy going on here. Yeah, we didn't. Except a moving wall. Yeah, we didn't shoot on a wider lens and move the TV closer. The wall just yep. disappeared. So another production element here. We yep. did soften the light from the Godox here, yep. but right out of frame. Seriously, it's probably in this corner of this yeah. frame. Mm -hmm. We had the Godox mm -hmm. uh, with a softbox mm -hmm. coming in here. Mm -hmm. And then we switched this lamp to the daylight bulb mm -hmm. from the tungsten bulb that was yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that would, the, the idea behind this was that if we had this lamp match all of our light sources mm -hmm. and we softened this Godox enough, yeah. the lamp motivates the light mm -hmm. in the room. Mm -hmm. So they're sitting in front of a television, 
you have a lamp on, mm -hmm. it kind of motivates the light. Mm -hmm. It might be a little too bright for yeah. a lamp, yeah. but your brain fills in these yeah. gaps and isn't yeah. asking questions. Yeah, the, what we weren't trying to, there's way better examples out there of how to professionally light and how to make a shot not look lit while you lit it. Yeah, We were kind of going pretty simple here. Hey, let's make the light kind of look like it's coming from the lamp. Um, but we also just liked, I think, the bright look of the shot with the white suits. And yep. But yeah, that was just a tiny detail of swapping yeah. out. Because if that's way warmer, and then we're hitting them with this more daylight, balanced light, yeah. um, your eye, one, it's just not going to look good. And mm -hmm. your eye, this isn't really a, we're not going for color contrast. Yeah. Yet. And a couple other notes for light and stuff. We have an Aperture MC, the tiny little Aperture MC. Mm -hmm sitting right here on the couch behind mm -hmm. Elijah's head. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what gave this hair light here yeah. Um, yeah. and a little bit here. Uh -huh. um, and we actually, we adjusted Elijah 10 times because yeah. we wanted his head to be clear yeah. of, uh, or we wanted his head to be covering the, the door handle. The door handle, yeah. Yeah, the, the door light. handle and the yeah. light. So. So that's another little production note going on here. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, yeah, I think that's everything about yeah. this shot. Yeah. And then it's just a slow push on a dolly and we'll play mm -hmm. the clip. Oh, the iPhone light is the flickering. Mm -hmm. If you see the flickering on the faces and the door panel, that's just an iPhone light. Yeah, the flashlight. The flashlight on the iPhone app being tapped because day of we realized that we just didn't have the light to get that look. We thought yeah. the TV would maybe do it and it just didn't. Yeah. And so we just yeah. tapped the iPhone light. Mm -hmm. um, this shot right here is a digital push. Yep. Um, and the MC, the Aperture MC is now just here yep. providing a little uh, rim hair yeah, light. Probably could have hit it better, but it's there. Digital push. And then here we cut back to the uh, dolly push. Mm -hmm. And then this was fun. We had, uh, who do we have here? Logan. Logan, that's yeah. right. Logan laying on a bench that was just, yeah. it was we at the found. venue. Mm -hmm. We just had Logan laying on a bench mm -hmm. and on, on cue he just popped up behind. Mm -hmm. That was not scripted. No, that was not scripted. So I think we, the idea was to have Logan do something right when the, the drums kicked in. I think when we framed the shot, it was really hard to fit four of them on this couch, like framed well with the door. And the TV. And, yeah, and I yeah. feel like we decided to go three on the couch, having Elijah centered, he's the one singing. It just looked way cleaner to have three. And that was just kind of a spur of the moment, like, hey, what if we liked the framing of Logan kind of behind the couch yeah. and it worked perfect for him to just it did to just pop up. And, and it adds to the humor yeah. of the whole thing yeah kind of the the hilarious the paint suits yeah. but like they're sleeping on a couch a little and, cheesy yeah it's like the whole it just it ended up working with the whole mm -hmm. thing and, and i loved i even knew when we shot this if you guys go back to the first shot you can actually see logan's arm yep his like he is popping up from the couch i was completely okay keeping that in there because yep. i thought it was funny it's like well, an Easter egg of like, yeah. no one's going to notice it, but Until, you're going to come back and be yeah. like, oh, he's been there the whole Yep, the whole he was time. there the whole time. So. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, then we have uh, just still dolly push. Um, More digital pushes. Digital pushes here. Yep. And these were all just, these were just tripod. Yeah. Simple yep. tripod. Yeah. Um, and I guess now would be a fine time to show this. We had uh, the band bring their sound system, mm -hmm. and we were cueing mm -hmm. the um, the track with mm -hmm. the uh, what do you call those? The, uh, the boop boop the oh uh, with the click track the click track there it yeah. is. So we had the click track mm -hmm. uh, playing so that the band could keep their timing yeah. right, and we would just click play on that, shoot the scene, mm -hmm. and so that's all that's happening here. Yeah. You would you would click play hmm. shoot the scene tripod these ones were pretty simple moving moving the tripod a lot i was mm -hmm. getting lunch mm -hmm. during those tripod ones yeah because it was somewhat simple yeah um, so mm -hmm. we have and this last one's probably important. the still the digital push 
and then there we go. So, yes, that is practical. Yeah, we did those in camera, so we knew we wanted to emphasize the the kind of the drum hit on the stop, and we thought it'd be funny to do a wink. And so, yeah, we just decided to do a digital push um, like we were doing before. So the push is digital, but we basically just had the camera um, set on Nate's bass, and I had the the tripod and just where I'm listening to the song, imagining what I'm gonna do. And we just, you know, at the end of Nate's, we whipped out to the left and then reset. And we actually centered the next shot on Trey. And we just, to start his shot, we, you know, started off to the side and then whipped into his face on the wink. And so then, right there, right there. That's you can, the, you can see the blend. Yep. So yeah, this is now Trey's shot. Yeah. Which is totally separate. These are yeah, two, two shots. Two separate shots. But right there, mm -hmm. it feels like it's one. Yeah. When because you the it. distance you're covering is yeah. about the same. Yeah. So the the main thing there was just making sure that my timing was correct with the song. Yep. And that Trey's wink um, was right on the beat to make that feel really clean. Yep. So again, practical here. And then this is the this is kind of another big shot, so we'll take some time on this, but mm -hmm. let's go ahead and, and let this video play here just a little bit. So we just let all of chorus one play because there's really only two things kind of going on here in chorus mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. It's handheld performance mm -hmm. and the around mm -hmm. tripod shot. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead, walk us through. Yeah, so we just let the whole chorus play and we did a couple takes of Elijah um, just going around um, doing the his space, thing. doing his thing. Uh, I think we used mostly just one take. We liked the him kind of throwing and catching the mic right here. Mm -hmm. We felt like that was a cool... Um, just, good energy there. Yeah, good energy. Um, and I guess the biggest thing to look at here is... I'm trying to find the spot of... I guess we don't really have a good shot of the light. Um, this was just being lit with one light source. So we had the, the Gemini 2x1 actually right here hoisted yeah. up behind the bike. And that was the only light we were adding to the shot that wasn't the massive big window. Yep. Um, and so the, we just... The second C-stand is yeah. uh, just holding a 5-in-1 reflector. That's all it's yeah. doing. Just diffusing we the We just had the huge Gemini, and then over top of it, five, we yeah. lifted a 5-in-1 reflector right. and just hung it down so, over it. So not legit, but it It, it worked. worked. I don't it know. softened up this light and... Made it look really good. Yeah, that's kind of the backlight you're seeing on Elijah right here is from is from that. And we did use haze in here, but mm -hmm. this space is enormous, Huge. Huge. and and the airflow in there is really strange. So it's right. it was hard to fill it or, or get any sort of meaningful yeah uh, direction or, yeah. or fill or yeah. um, there's atmosphere. just a little bit. There's a little bit. So in yeah, there. you can see and feel some atmosphere, some haze mm -hmm. in these shots but it was not mm -hmm. a major element. Mm -hmm. And then the handheld stuff, this was just a few takes of, we had the song playing on the speaker and I was just handheld on the 24 to 70 that has the image stabilization. Oh, nice. and, um, I was just kind of going between the different um, band members as I was picturing in my head what parts I wanted to emphasize and cut to. So I think we did a few passes of the chorus um, focusing on different uh, band members and just what I was seeing and then when we when we cut it all together it looked um, actually really clean the transitions between um, where Elijah was at and when we were filming the um, the band members yeah and this is where having a music background 
did help mm -hmm. because you were able to mm -hmm. hear the song yourself, mm -hmm. imagine the cuts, right. anticipate the video, where you would need to be, at what timing. Yes. So it did help to have a music background, but just as likely you could memorize this song, yep. listen to it constantly, yep. Yep. and have been yep. equally prepared. Yeah. Or have do the chorus and record an entire take just focusing on one, one band person. member at a time so that you can sync those all up later and you can cut to any band member at any time. I think I knew- You were moving between yeah, band I was, members. Yeah, I was moving between band members. I wanted some of the shots to have um, some movement. And so, um, yeah, that was the main mm -hmm. thing there. But you don't necessarily need to know the song super well yeah. to, to do that. But this right here is you with a, a high tension mm -hmm. on that tripod. Mm -hmm and really pushing it yeah. because that push is how you ended up getting that steady movement. And yeah. even the movement is not always perfect, no. but again, your eyes fill in the gap Yeah. and with him constantly right. moving, yeah. you don't notice any of the very minor right. uh, jitters. Yeah, and, and, so, we're, and we're autofocus. So this yeah. is a good example of we autofocus this whole thing. So I think I had my tracker um, mark just set pretty wide. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just trying to keep Elijah close to the center of the frame as I was trying to keep up with him speed wise. Um, yep. But we didn't have any issues yep. autofocus on it. That's, this is a good place to just kind of pause with the autofocus conversation and just say like, yeah. even these Fuji cameras that people mm -hmm. dog on the autofocus, like, if you don't have the budget for a focus puller right. to be on set yeah. or for, you know, or the hand, you know, the extra hand yeah. to be able to pull focus yourself, you were pushing this yeah. tripod, you would not yeah. have been able to no. manually focus. Yeah. And if you had just set your manual focus yeah. for a performance like this with energy, yeah. him moving, he's moving, you would not have been able to lock yeah. one manual focus point. Right. So you really had to go auto mm -hmm. and it worked fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so. knowing just what settings you need to use. So I've used the X-T3 for a while and I just know kind of like what settings I like, what feel like a sweet spot. Yep. And so just making sure you set, um, if you're trying to lock on a specific point, just make sure you set that point on your camera um, and let it do a good job of yep. keeping up for you. Yep, and then going through here, I think then we get to the so that this TV shot, this will be all in the post-production video. Yeah. This this, this is was not, something we shot in the living room sequence earlier in the day. Yep. This is not at all a production day conversation. Yeah. Uh, but then this, the we'll, we'll click play on this. Let this play. Through. So these spinning shots. Mm -hmm were the one piece of gear we didn't really mention yeah. in the gear talk at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, so this was our second camera on a tripod, a really cheap tripod yeah. with the, it's actually the Canon. 40 millimeter or 20? 20 24 millimeter F2.8 pancake lens. It's like a really tiny lens. Um, that I just like to use for photos just to have a small lens, but actually screwed onto that was like a vintage wide angle adapter that yeah. I found for a dollar at a camera store, like yeah. my early days of video. And basically what this adapter, it basically kind of gave us more of a fisheye wide look, but it, it also gave us some really fun distortion. Yeah, super distorted on the, edges. the edges. That's all just the character of this yeah this lens yep and so we just put it on a tripod and i turned on the song and basically had them spin and we had it planned where we were gonna have two, two of them be happy two of them be kind of sad boy yeah um just to kind of go with the theme of the song yeah and then we just cut those together i think we put the aperture mc on, on the, the light on, on the camera yeah. To give a little bit of light, you can see it um, in Nate's glasses. Yeah, and Nate's right there. Yeah, right you there, can you see can the, you can see the light. Yeah, but again, since it's such a funny and fun shot, you're not really asking questions about like, oh, that that looks saucy or right. whatever. So, right. yeah, 
Those are really easy, actually. Mm -hmm. The the band mm -hmm. just like held the tripod up against their waist and yeah. then spun. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, and I think actually I should have done a better job of making sure they all spun the same direction. I think one of them I actually um, had to flip it. Yeah, I had to flip it. That was oh, a mistake. Funny. That'll be a post production thing. But yeah. Okay. So then uh, now we're into kind of our second chorus, yeah. right? Verse two. Okay. Verse oh, two. verse two. Okay. So verse two, we'll go ahead and let this play, but you're going to see that there's, there's kind of a theme here. The shots are pretty much yeah. the same uh, through verse two. So, yeah. uh, so we'll go ahead and back up to the beginning of verse two and let that play. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, what you just saw in verse two is basically whip pans yeah. with Elijah, our lead singer, mm -hmm. whip pans in and out. In and out of every shot. Every shot to the band members, which were digital zooms. Mm -hmm. um, so we whip panned into each band member and, out. and then, mm -hmm. and out, yeah. And then it was a digital zoom. Yeah. Um, yeah, and but this, these execution. kind of shots, yeah, execution on these, I knew listening to the song what like parts of the musicians I wanted to incorporate. So this was planned out before where I knew I'd have Elijah walking through a space, and then we hear the guitar, I want to cut to Trey on the roof, we're going to whip pan out back to Elijah in another room. Um, Trey, funny shot about this, we had Trey, the guitar player, he actually opened this door for us. So if you yep. notice, it's really subtle, but this door just opens. Um, that was a band member behind yep. the door, yep. uh, making sure that we could just make that look really clean. And uh, finger fingerprints of the artist here. I am window, in the window. window, the window. Yeah, we didn't have but, a polarizer. Yeah, but again, I mean, who you know no one is noticing this in the yeah. course of watching this music this video whip. you're yeah, yeah you're looking yeah dead center yeah. and this is autofocus but again mm -hmm. it looks like you know because you whip into this shot so yeah. rough yeah it looks like mm -hmm. somebody manually pulls that yeah back so yeah these again, are these are autofocus and then we're on the glide cam with our second camera package for these um, yeah Lightweight so, camera package, mm -hmm. glide cam, and then these are uh, transitions are happening in camera yep. with a little bit of a, a blur mm -hmm. um, happening. They just cut. We just oh, cut you together. just cut these yeah. ones. You didn't blur yeah, them together. Didn't blur. Okay, we'll go. We'll touch on that in post mm -hmm. later. Yep. But yep, we knew we wanted to see the drums right here, and then cut back to Elijah and have him in a different part of the house. This, there was no light on this, was there? We did not light this. We did not. Yeah, so. Well, no, we did. We had the Godox actually to the right in the kitchen, okay. just hitting the ceiling. Yeah, we just bounced so, low. Mm -hmm. So that's all. We just filled the room with light. We mm -hmm. weren't trying to like light this. Yeah. We wanted it to feel environmental, like, yeah. like we were out there. Yeah. The rest of these are mostly the sun, yeah, just natural shady, light. shady day, natural yeah. light blasting yeah. through this courtyard. Yeah, and some tricks in post, which we'll get into later. Yeah, I'll we'll touch on post, yeah. but yeah, that verse two, it's it's all pretty simple yeah. here. Um, yeah. These digital pushes, yeah, and then the real pans, and then we're into yeah. chorus two. Yep, and chorus two is the same thing. Pretty similar. Uh, we kept it pretty similar. The live performance handheld as well as like the rotating yeah and then here is where things start to get a little bit more interesting from yep. a production standpoint with yeah um uh, with the bridge
So yeah, bridge, this was the shot that I was planning the night before. So this is us on the dolly, and I knew that I wanted the shot to start tight, um, where you didn't really know what Elijah was doing, because you the bike was in the background, but we haven't really oh. seen the bike. Yeah. And this was kind of like, what's something visual we can do on the bridge that keeps your interest, and that's mm -hmm. where the bike came in. Yeah. And so we've got just a long one take on the dolly, kind of using the tripod, um, set up on set the dolly track on the dolly you'll be seeing the bts of that and we didn't move any lights for this um the lighting was just what we had used for the chorus mm -hmm. um the choruses we had the band move um just to get framed up we had logan move Movie on set. to the little dock over here and we just wanted to make sure that when we got as wide as possible that we could see all the band members and so this just turns into similar to the choruses we did some some handheld yep, of each band member um similar this shot was the only shot of the day that we used a ladder on and so we I actually was just mm. standing on a ladder i kind of had this image in my head but this was handheld um with I think my camera monitor died too. This was yeah. just handheld with the X-T3 monitor and we in post were able to look like it was shot on a tripod, but yep. we were just standing, I was standing pretty high on the ladder. Yeah, so you're standing up on a ladder, mm -hmm. camera locked into your body, yeah. your monitor did die. Monitor's this. dead. Yeah, and so you're just looking down at yeah. your little X-T3 monitor trying yeah. to get this. Trying to keep it as steady um, as possible. And yeah this this push here i just think this is this was for you this was one of the shots you were very most excited about mm -hmm. and i think mm -hmm. that this just like you know it breaks up the song you're you're a little over halfway through the song and yeah. it really kind of helps to break it up we've been doing quick cuts yeah for the last and you've got this yeah. random exercise by mm -hmm. like and again this this even just kind of speaking creatively to the exercise bike yeah uh, that you could probably find a thrift store yeah. or something like that. Like ask a grandparent, ask yeah. ask somebody around, yeah. try and find one of these. But it contributed because it just kind of fit the quirkiness, the goofy yeah. feeling of the whole thing. Yeah. But it also fit around. Yeah. This idea of around mm -hmm. as he's pedaling, and yet he's stationary. Yeah. So it's just kind of all funny. Yeah. It just fit the whole thing perfectly. But that's what's going on yeah. here with this. And this shot. is this is autofocus as well. So this yep. entire shot, you do you do see for one frame it kind of hunts, um, but other than that, this was a full yeah um, autofocus just making our. But with him moving really fast, it, yeah, it kind of blends in there. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it blends in. We set our focus point really small and set it on the bike. Yeah, um, just towards the lower part of the frame. So the reason we did this is on on set day of Blaze was struggling with this shot, yeah. and I've just been using Fuji a little bit longer and know some of the quirks a little better. And Fuji is a hybrid based autofocus system, so it uses part contrast and uh, part phase, mm -hmm. and so um, so we were like yeah. up here on his face trying to center this yeah. and it was just too much with that backlight yeah and the, the white shirt yeah the contrast and everything was getting thrown off with the harsh backlight the yeah. darker face so what we did was we just moved instead of the focus point being somewhere around mm -hmm. here i just put it down here on elijah's body yeah. knowing that when we backed up it's gonna stay that there. would still be like down here, yeah. that would still be the central focal point mm -hmm. uh, of the frame. So yeah. that's how we managed yeah. the autofocus yeah. on this and shot. And this shot, this was one of my favorites in the video. I think this was at the tail end of the day. I think the only thing that I would have done different, we didn't move the lighting um, from the chorus shot. So as you can see, we're kind of like blasting Elijah with a lot of light and we don't, there's not a lot of like shape on his face. I think my least favorite part of the shot is when we initially cut to him. It's just a pretty harsh um, and not the most like flattering light. Um, so I think what I would have done if we had a little bit more time, I would have moved this light more to 
the side of yeah. kind of where the band's at. Yeah. But that was kind of a moment of we're fighting time. We had to be out of the, the space by five. Yeah. And it still looks good. It doesn't look bad, well, but in January we yeah. were gonna be out of light yeah. by five. Yeah. We yeah. we wouldn't have had light left. We were yeah. running out of light. And yeah. so the Gemini is in the same position mm -hmm. as it was before. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, back left behind yeah. us yeah. here. Uh, it's in the same position as you saw during the rotating around right. shots. So, yeah, but again, uh, and then... And we, and kept, then we you, kept it there for every shot, all the handheld. We didn't. Yep. We weren't moving lights really for any of these shots. Yep. And then the pedaling here, mm -hmm. this was kind of to signify the pace was picking up. So, yeah. so uh, right... So you use that slower one and then, yeah. And then you, and then you pushed in yeah. really fast. Yeah. This was another in camera. Um, we had it on the dolly and we, I just pushed it in really quick. And the goal was to push in and whip out knowing that there was going to be one last whip. And I yeah. actually think on the video, I think timing this was actually pretty difficult. I think the whip that we see is only from the next shot. I think timing wise, it didn't even exactly didn't work. we didn't we didn't get the timing exactly right but i think the intensity of the zoom in and then we see the camera jerk was enough to give it that yeah the whole that effect yeah yeah i mean to get that you were trying to basically mm -hmm. do this really hard push and then mm -hmm. you you drop like yes. not, you didn't drop it yeah. but like you like Pulled yeah. your camera off of the yeah. dolly track actually yeah. Yeah. to get yeah. to try and get that in right. camera, and it just wasn't. Had happening. to make sure the camera was locked on there. Like this yeah. was if there's a shot to break your camera, probably that yeah. one. But and this is by the way, a little bit on gear limitations. Right here, you can see uh, oh, what is what is this, the shutter. gel the rolling oh, shutter. You can see the rolling shutter of the X the XT three here, but again, these are these are the things that like reviewers are going into detail yeah. about yeah. the rolling shutter performance right and this is just not something that in context you're going to notice yeah. while playing a video yeah. Yeah. Uh, so i just wanted to mention that because i think it's just kind mm -hmm. of funny we get so nitpicky about these cameras yeah. with autofocus and rolling shutter and i didn't do any rolling shutter repair there was none of yeah it was just as it was and your whip pan transitions look great yeah so this this was a spontaneous idea. Mm -hmm. The heads popping up over mm -hmm. each other was totally spontaneous. The execution was pretty difficult because yeah. the first two heads were easy to get over top of yeah. each other. <laughs> uh huh. But getting, to get to get Nate above Logan, and then also time the whip with when the first person was going to pop out. That was a lot more complicated than I thought. But. Yeah, it was a fun idea, mm -hmm. and then we got committed to it, mm -hmm. and, and it was actually. One of the most difficult shots to execute all day. Yes. Yeah. I think Nate might have been standing on a bucket mm -hmm. or we were trying to keep them hidden behind the wall, but yeah, yeah. Not, the, not the easiest. But yeah, it ended up being really fun for them. Mm -hmm. It was, it's, mm -hmm. and it, again, it all contributes to the feeling of the video. Yeah. So yeah, this is, this is awesome. And then are mm -hmm. we, we're into chorus three now. Chorus three. So we'll let... Course three play for you guys. So chorus three ends right on this big drum hit, which is is like the perfect ending. Mm -hmm. But then the instrumentals don't fade right away. Right. So you kept it with the live performance stuff. Yeah, and that was a decision we made after the fact. We originally had just cut straight to the couch after the big drum hit there. Um, some feedback from the band and me watching it, we just wanted to keep the energy up a little longer um, because it's pretty sterile, just them, them yeah. on the couch. But this overhead shot is yeah. something we wanted to mention. Yeah. 
because you'll notice there is no tripod in the yeah. center here. Yep. Uh, and you'll also notice that it's just kind of a crazy yeah. angle. Yeah. Like it's just kind of really interesting mm -hmm. touring the space. Right, yeah. When we toured the space, I kind of jokingly asked if it was possible to get on the roof of the living room and the guy was like, oh yeah, for sure, we can we can go up there right now. And so yeah. when we toured it, we actually got on the roof and kind of visualized, okay, what is what does the space look like standing on top of the living room to the courtyard and we see that with trey so this um, is trey sitting on hmm. the, the same roof. roof that we later filmed from yes. but this is the living room yeah. so the way that this dome house is set up mm -hmm. is that there is a home Within inside it. of the dome yeah <laughs> crazy yeah but this is the roof yeah. of the living room area mm -hmm. where we shot the tv sequence right. and the couch trey got up there for a shot or two yeah, uh, and, and we, we just filmed pretty much a whole pass of the final chorus up there. And like the reason we introduced this last just because we hadn't seen it yet and the other two choruses were really similar. So cutting to this shot right as the chorus comes in is just to visually kind of break up what we've seen before. And it, yeah, it makes you think, oh, is that a drone? Yep. How is this? Yeah, how, how, this how do they have this shot in here? Yeah. yeah. And the rest of this kind of similar to what we've seen. So yeah. this is the the same around, yeah. rotating, the live performance. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, by this point in the video, these shots are all pretty familiar. Yeah. I think there's one attention. there's one whip in this final chorus that someone asked me about. It's right here. We'll let it play. So from Elijah over to Trey. That was one, we didn't exactly plan that. Mm -hmm. That was just in the handheld shot that I was moving. This was me moving between the bass player and this shot of Trey. And it looks, when you watch it, because you've seen the other whips, I think your mind makes you think, oh, that was another planned whip transition. But yep. that was just the handheld B-roll that I was well working with. And I think you did really well throughout the whole thing in setting up Mm -hmm. your practical yeah. alignments yeah. so like you see the tv yeah. here in the frame in the bottom right right and as you start this whip transition you see the tv it, comes it, into frame yeah. like in the bottom yeah. right yeah. so you're again your brain is an amazing thing yeah. and it just fills in these gaps for you and it just makes sense of things yeah. and and so it just feels natural that you would mm -hmm. see and we hadn't seen a whip transition in the chorus the whole time so Yep. Putting that in there felt like kind of the last chorus. Let's keep let's yeah. keep the energy up. And, and another thing too here is that you might notice throughout the video the autofocus isn't perfect. No. But manual focus wouldn't be yeah. more perfect or doing anything differently than yeah. this. And so that's that's what's beautiful about yeah. a live performance kind of feel mm -hmm. is that when you watch this footage you know, of course the, the focus might be, you know, in and out because this guy yeah. is high yeah. energy yeah. rocking on his guitar. Yeah. He's not going to be perfectly right. in focus. That would be, it would be unnatural to see that. So, yeah. um, so yeah, then we just have the, mm -hmm. after we exit the performance, mm -hmm. then we have the, the outro. final outro. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we'll let that play and then we'll walk through how we ended it. So this was, if you hadn't guessed, we had to shoot the end. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the day. At the beginning of the day. Because the sequences just worked out where we had to shoot in the living room in the morning. Yeah. So yeah, we were shooting this sequence. The same setup as before. The same exact setup as before. And some of these aren't even the outro. Some of these weren't yeah. like planned the outro. You'll notice yeah. that this TV shot with the graphic overlay, mm -hmm. that's been used several times in different contexts throughout the video. Right. So this wasn't like we did it on purpose or anything right. like that. And then, you know, this was the same setup that we used mm -hmm. for the push. Yeah, we're we're pushing the over the TV. 
Yep. And we just had the ending here just candidly kind of play out. So the guys kind of wanted the whole video to feel lighthearted and goofy. So the ending here was just me pushing in on the dolly as we have the song playing on the speaker. And I said, hey, when it ends, just kind of like talk and then walk off camera. Yeah. And I knew that as they would get up and start to walk off camera, that's when I was going to begin like bringing the dolly back. So all that is actually in camera and we're not. We're not yep. scaling that in post. So we yep. just held the shot really long. And and we let them kind of just, I mean, they're friends. Yeah. Of course, they're in a band together. They and so, fun. yeah, so they're just goofing around talking. And he's, Credits. And then uh, the iPhone light keeps flashing yep. uh, just to kind of keep consistency. Credits. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was the whole thing. Yep. I think we covered yep. every single shot. We walked through all the gear and I, yeah, I think the only thing that we wanted to address before we close the video is on production day, mm -hmm. how do you keep energy up when they're on set all day? Mm -hmm. That's, that's the final thing. Yeah. I think that was something that I hadn't anticipated before. I don't think I've done a shoot like this where we're kind of doing it all day and there's going to be times of the day where some of the band members are going to have nothing to do. They're not in the shot, the sequence that mm -hmm. we're shooting. So they're kind of just hanging out. I think um, we definitely took a break for lunch. That was a big energy boost. I think the first push of the day, by the time we were hitting lunch, people were already starting to feel hungry. And mm -hmm. so we took a break and I think we just tried to shoot the other sequences in a way where the rest of the band could still hang out and have fun together and just hang out while we were shooting. Yeah. I think the only thing that would have been better was to get some snacks and just maybe a more comfortable area for the band to hang out when they weren't in the sequence, just to keep the energy lively. Yeah. Um, it's a long day when yep. you're just hanging out for, you know. Just kind of waiting. Yeah, just waiting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they did a really good job. I think they did a really great job of just being patient and being quiet when we like needed needed to really nail yeah, something but also like they stayed or in the room so that if we had to shoot something really quick it's like hey i, I, need, I need you, you. i need you real quick yeah. they're not like chilling in a green room or they ran an errand it's like they're they're kind of there oh, ready to yeah. go so yeah shout out to them yeah and that's something that you just kind of have to prepare and ask you know your talent to just yeah. say like hey this this might feel like a long day it is work yeah like it, you know yeah. this is fun we're excited to make this video but it, mm -hmm. but it's work so be and they're ready. not they're not professional actors. I think if you're an actual actor, you're used to the, the in between time on set. You're on your phone. You're sending emails. You're yeah. these guys are just in a band and haven't really done a video like this before. Yeah. So yeah. Um, well, any final notes on production stuff that you wanted to mention? Maybe last bit of production. We mentioned it throughout, but the lighting and like the blocking going on is really simple. I think we kept the lighting pretty consistent throughout the video. We weren't moving lights. Um, we kind of would set up the light for the wide shot in the in the specific scene, and we would shoot um, pretty much all of it like that. If we maybe maybe on a few we moved the lighting closer, but a lot of the lighting we kept pretty as minimal as we could. Yep. To to light it well, and John was there to kind of you know move the light if we needed but there yeah. wasn't a ton of moving lights in for a close-up bringing in neg from the side to soak up shadow a lot of it was pretty simple and we were given a, an amazing situation this was part of your decision yeah. in this space yeah. was that was that the lighting in here was awesome yeah that like wood walls yeah negged for us yeah. like yeah. the wood walls of this space yeah. kind of filled a bit of that neg roll yeah. for us. Uh, the lamp was in the perfect place. Yeah. And we, we did think throughout the day about motivating the light. Like mm -hmm. we always thought about like, was the light motivated enough? Yeah. And again, we were okay with a little bit of, you know, the sourcey look. Yeah. Um, Cause we wanted it, you know, we were okay with it being acknowledged as a music video. Yeah. You know, we weren't yeah. trying to make it look perfect. Yeah. So, so it's sourcey in some places, mm -hmm. in some ways, but we just, we tried to motivate the light where we could. Yeah. And honestly, this place was filled with uh, wood walls, 
plants tons of natural light corners and natural light which yeah. ended up being and it was a cloudy day mm -hmm. which ended up being soft light yeah. with a lot of neg yeah. going on naturally yeah. naturally occurring mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. if that's the last thing yeah then we're gonna close this video i know it's really long thanks so much for bearing with us if you made it clear to the end hopefully mm -hmm. you've picked up something helpful from the pre-production and the production but if not there's two more parts. There is the post-production and then there is the Q&A. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. We will get to them in the Q&A. Uh, hopefully we covered most of your questions in this production video, but that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Breath, fall back in the circles and